Good morning, everybody. I, uh, I am so proud to be here today. I want to welcome you all to Brockton's War Memorial here in West Elm Street. This building uh, was built in 1930 to honor all the brave men and women from the City of Champions, uh, those that paid the ultimate sacrifices during the great wars and conflicts. Uh, without their sacrifice and all the sacrifices of uh, veterans that have served and veterans that are serving, none of us will be able to do what we do here in our Commonwealth, in our country, and of course in our city of Brockton, Massachusetts. So, uh, my name is Robert Sullivan. I'm mayor of the city of Brockton. I want to thank all the department heads that are here today. Uh, I see Chief Brian Nardelli is here. I know Chief Brenda Perez from uh, the Brockton Police Department is on a vacation day today. Uh, but I see City Councilor Wynn Fowell here today, City Councilor Shirley Azak, State Representative Jerry Cassidy, State Rep Representative Slash Councilor Lodge Rita Mendez is here, Representative um, from State Senator Mike Brady, Jimmy is here today as well, and I know Rep Dubois uh, is out of, uh, out of the city today. Um, but today is a historic day. Uh, I want to thank Kelly Young, uh, who leads the uh, Veterans Affairs Office here in the city of Brockton. And you'll hear from Ms. Young in just a moment. I, I want to thank my office. I want to thank Sidney Merrill, my chief of staff. And uh, if you're a veteran, could you please stand? Again, we, uh, we truly owe so much to all of you uh, for the sacrifices that you have done and also the sacrifice of your family. So thank you again. Uh, we wouldn't be able to assemble without what you do each and every day. I want to give a shout out to Commander Graham from the VFW Post 1046. Thank you, Commander, for what you do. As mayor, it's an honor and privilege to appoint uh, members to different boards and commissions. And we have the War Memorial Trustees, and we have two of those wonderful, dedicated folks here today. We have Sarah Units and Matt Stanton. Thank you for what you do. The way it's broken up is uh, it's a five-member board. So Sarah and Matt are the non-veteran members under the charter. And then I'd like to give a, a special shout out to the three veteran members. So we have Brian Madden, we have Miles Jackson, and we have Ryan Burke that couldn't make it today, but we truly thank them for their service to our nation as well. So why are we here today? Well, first of all, I wanted to do it indoors so you can feel how oppressive the heat is here. This thing was built with no air conditioner, right? And the heating system is iffy at best. But thanks to our wonderful federal delegation, and I really want to give a shout out again to Congressman Stephen Lynch and U.S. Senator Ed Markey and U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren, that three of them recently, we call them the big three, they recently came to City Hall uh, for a different earmark that they gave us that's going to benefit generations of kids when we spent $3 million to uh, repurpose the Cosgrove Pool on the east side. But you hear about the American Rescue Plan, the ARPA money, the federal money, so we got a tranche of $34 million directly payable to the city of Brockton. And uh, what I said then to the CFO, Troy Clarkson, I'll say to you again right now, the two groups that we are most thankful for, that we owe the most gratitude, are the veterans and the senior citizens. The senior citizens and the veterans. So right off the bat, I said, the Mary Cruz Kennedy Council on Aging Senior Center was spending money on, millions of dollars was spending money on. And then the War Memorial was spending millions of dollars. So we're spending over $6 million on this building, uh, $6 million of ARPA money. So before we get into the actual event, uh, the CFO, Troy Claxton, is here. He's a multitasked individual. Uh, he is not just a, a master when it comes to municipal finance, but he has uh, a wonderful singing voice. So he's going to open it up. I'd ask you all to stand as he sings the national anthem. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the peril 
us fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'd ask you all to continue standing. Let's take a moment of silence for those brave Brocktonians and brave Americans that have paid the ultimate sacrifice here in the city in conflicts uh, beyond the nation. Let's take a moment of silence, please. God bless them all. May they rest in peace and thank them. Thank you. So again, you'll be hearing from, from Kelly, you'll be hearing from representatives from the VA, and then you'll be hearing from uh, Amoresco that's doing some projects here. When you talk about six million bucks uh, being spent on Ward 2 in a wonderful building here, what is six million dollars being spent on? And let me just tell you quickly, we're putting a new HVAC and heating system into this building. Again, this building was built at a time before air conditioning and modern heating systems even existed. So when we come back here with a ribbon cutting, it's gonna be a wonderful, wonderful building that all of us are gonna have fresh air, which is truly vital to the health of the occupants and visitors, but more importantly, the people that work here and visit here each and every day. So we will be having uh, a change of air uh, two to three times each hour, uh, but more importantly, we're not going to have to deal with the oppressive heat. Many city councilors may remember when the elevator was broken and we adopted this building as a quasi-chamber of the city council. Couldn't have meetings sometimes. It was extremely hot in here. Um, so we are spending a lot of money to have an HVAC system. Uh, we're putting a new roof on this building as well. We need to make sure that uh, it starts uh, top uh, down. So a new roof is going to button up the exterior, but also it's going to keep uh, the building weather tight, and so we will not have any residual issues, which we have right now. We have some moisture issues in the basement. Uh, we're also having a lot of aesthetic upgrades for the historical elements of this building. This is a beautiful building on the exterior, but also the interior. We want to earmark uh, money so we can bring it back to new. Uh, we want it to be historically accurate, but we also want it to be a grand, awe-inspiring appearance. We are going to be uh, not replacing, but restoring the, all the historic windows here. The storm windows are going to be replaced with new energy efficient. Uh, all of the damaged plaster throughout this building is going to be uh, replaced. All the hard wood's going to be refinished. And thanks to Kelly's suggestion, and I jumped on it when she made it, we will have over a $700,000 audiovisual system here, an AV system here. We use this for many, many community purposes, debates, the Brockton Symphony used to be here. I want to have community theater here as well. But we need to have an AV system that we're all proud of. We will be doing that. The auditorium is going to be something that all of us are proud of as well. More importantly, uh, back in the day, there was uh, bathrooms and showers downstairs. Uh, the veterans would come and play handball and racquetball and then shower up. They're obsolete. They're being removed. We're going to be having uh, uh, ADA-compliant bathrooms down there. Uh, for the men and women that are going to be visiting and working here in the city of Brockton. So I also want to recognize and thank Susan Nacastle, City Council President, for joining us here today, and our wonderful Register of Deeds, a wonderful public servant, John Buckley, for being here as well today. John, thank you for what you do each and every day for the county, but really for Brockton. So thank you, John. At this time, I'm going to invite Kelly Young to the podium. Kelly. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. So you can hopefully feel the before and then next year the after. Um, so I'm kind of squeezed in between the mayor who just gave a really great synopsis of the, the project and the VA who's probably going to talk about things that I wanted to talk about as well. I just want to highlight how important it is to have a clean environment. Everybody's really excited about the AC. I am as well. 
I'm excited about the heat, like regulated heat, because the cast iron system that's here absolutely cranks. It's really hard to adjust. So we're either, we're just always hot here, right? Hot in the summer, hot in the winter. There's worse problems to have, but it's, it's uncomfortable. Um, but we take for granted clean air and just a clean, non-toxic environment. And the community that we advocate for, the veteran community right now, uh, for, the, for the vets and their families, the greatest challenge they're facing, or we're facing, is toxic exposure. So from Agent Orange to burn pits, right now those are the, the highest volume of claims, medical problems, family support issues, like directing people to the resources to, to help with that. Um, so I don't want to overlook the fact that the fresh air intake and having this building, that's the, the war memorial, the, the veterans hub for the city, I'm challenging the VA, you know, our veterans hub for the city. Uh, it's really important that this is a clean environment. And when you come here, go, when you go anywhere really, you don't really think about the quality of air, you know, unless you're behind like a truck and you, the exhaust hits you in the face. But a lot of the stuff that is, has poisoned people and, you know, really changed the quality of their life and their families' lives uh, was, it, it was subtle. They didn't realize what they were exposed to and they didn't realize the long-term impact. So I'm really, really happy that we've recognized in Brockton how important that is to put resources um, to protect what we have as a historic building. I'm really glad the solution wasn't, you know, tear it down and build a new one. Um, I don't think the building was that, it was that rough, but that's the solution in a lot of places. So I'm really glad we found a happy medium where we're restoring what we have, but also holding it to the, the modern day standard based on the research we have now. Um, so I want to draw your attention, you know, this is like, this is a, I consider it an accessibility project. This building isn't accessible right now to anybody with heart or respiratory conditions. It's just unsafe to have big events, right? We don't have a full house right now, but if you've been to the Purple Heart luncheon there, we, when we have a full house, it's over 100 degrees in here and it's really not accessible or a usable space. Um, and we've been making great progress over the years. If you look, if you go by this door, you'll see that the floorboards are different. That used to be the elevator down to the bowling alley downstairs. Um, and there's a screen here that's smaller than the one we've ordered. I think the mayor gave a little bit of an inflated number. It's a little, it, was, it was a much more reasonable price, uh, but the screen that's coming in will also make the building accessible. Um, we have platforms coming in to make the balcony accessible for wheelchair seating. Uh, and the bigger screens will allow for visual accessibility. So we're really, we're really happy about all the work that's being done here, but, but mainly the air, because you don't see it, so you don't really realize how important it is. Um, so I hope you're here for the Purple Heart Luncheon, uh, Veterans Day, all our big events here. Hopefully we'll have more programming. We can get the projection booth going again um, and have movie nights. So I hope the next time we see each other, we're comfortable in this building. Thank you. I think this, the CFO just uh, tapped me and he said, May, you've never given an inflated number in your life. And I said, no, I, I didn't. We're going to spend every dime we have on this because we owe it to the vets. I want to, uh, I, I already recognized him, but he just came. Brian Madden, uh, thank you for your service to our nation. He is, again, uh, the third member that has joined us today from the War Memorial Trustees. I also want to thank uh, Ann McCormick and Bob McCormick for being here. Ann is the former Council on Aging Director. Bob McCormick served our nation, has written many books about Brockton veterans. So thank you for being here as well. So before we hear from our friends from the VA and from Amoresco, just a quick story. Um, I was asked by the Massachusetts uh, Mayors Association, the M MMA, to host a conference here in Brockton. Uh, I was told that it hadn't been held in the city of Brockton since Mayor Jack Units, and so I welcomed that, and they said, where do you want to host it? I said, the War Memorial Building. And we did it, and we had 23 mayors from around uh, the state of Massachusetts come here. And every single one of them remarked on what a beautiful building you have. And I looked them all in the eye and I said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Think about what six million bucks is going to do to renovate this place. The other thing is, BEMA, Brockton Emergency Management, Director Steve Hook is here, uh, is currently using this as uh, a location, right? It's multitask. But um, as all of you know, two nights ago, we did the groundbreaking at the old Brockton High School, the public safety building, $98 million public safety building, which will be police, fire, IT is leaving Brockton High School from the core building to come there. 
free up classroom space, but also Director Hook and Bima will be vacating the War Memorial going across the street. Uh, the beauty of that is it's going to free up more space here for our veterans and for our community endeavors as well. One of our wonderful community partners that always helps our veterans, and when I became mayor, uh, they jumped in to work with Brockton Hospital, Signature Healthcare, Neighborhood Health Center, was the VA to help us maneuver the pandemic. So we are proud to have the VA here in the city of Brockton, what they do each and every day to help our veterans, and we are proud to have them offer some words today. So VA, uh, thank you for what you do. All right, good morning, everyone. So thank you for inviting us to participate in this kickoff celebration. Uh, this occasion is about more than repairs and improvements. It's about the sacrifices of those who have served our nation and community, and about providing a place honoring those that uh, served and sacrificed, um, and ensuring that the space is accessible so veterans, their family members of the community can come together and remember. At VA, we too honor those who have served, working every day to fulfill Lincoln's promise to care for those who have borne the battle and their families, caregivers, and survivors. For us in VA healthcare, that means providing our living veterans with accessible, world-class healthcare. And we are doing just that right here at our medical center in Brockton. It is my hope that participating in events like this with you and continuing to work with communities and veteran service organizations to advocate for our veterans, that we can reinforce the bond between veterans and communities so veterans can continue to access the care and services they have earned. And so all of us can continue to remember those who have given their lives in service to our nation. Thank you all again for joining us. It's both an honor and a pleasure to be with you today. I also want to recognize, I already gave him a shout out, but he's here today and he also is a veteran and proudly had served our nation. Miles Jackson, again, we have four out of the five uh, board uh, members here today. Thank you, Miles. Thank you. I, at this time, uh, Dan Smith, on behalf of Amoresco, is going to say some words. And uh, Dan, uh, Brocktonian, uh, they have done so much work in the city of Brockton at the Shaw Center at Campanelli Stadium. Uh, and now uh, they are charged to, to get this going and uh, had a promise it's going to be completed by the fall. So we got a lot of work to do and Dan is here to, uh, to give some thoughts and some suggestions and some ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Good, good morning, everyone. Um, I didn't prepare any words, but I'm up here with a profound amount of thanks and gratitude to not only you, Mayor Sullivan, and the leadership that you provide to your team, Troy Clarkson, the, the whole, all of the department heads, the, the teams that are behind them to get the job done, and that's what we're here to do today. I'm also incredibly proud to be here on a project that's representative of some of the most important citizens in our country and in my hometown. Um, Megan, Megan Keith, who everyone will get to know, is the project manager with, with Amoresco, Army veteran. Um, I'm really proud to be a part of your team, Megan, to work with you to help deliver a great project. So, <laughs> former mayor and, and counselor, Wynn Farwell, Councillor Azak, your support of this executive team within the, the city is profoundly Can't forget important. Councillor Mendez. Councillor Mendez, I'm, I'm sorry. So um, long story short is this project is going to com be completed in a couple months. The mechanical equipment, the interior work will be done and there will be a ribbon cutting that will be in a comfortable space that is representative and commensurate with the individuals that live in the city of Brock and that have made the sacrifices, them and their families. Extremely thankful. I can't say that enough, Mayor. The trust and confidence that you have in Amoresco, in our team, uh, doesn't go, it, it's not taken for granted by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, this is a great partnership. It's a wonderful city, my hometown. Thank you very much. And please to answer any questions anybody may have after, uh, after this concludes. So thank you very much.
So just just before we conclude, just just a couple of the, of the thoughts um, about where we're going to be taking this building. Um, but before I say that, I want to give a shout out. I, other departments that are here today, again, I, I mentioned Fire Chief Brian Nardelli, Deputy uh, Albanese is here as well. Um, again, we have um, the Veterans Office here. Uh, we have the DPW here. We have the Mayor's Office here. We have the CFO's Office here. We have the Assessor's Office here. We have the Auditors here. We have BMA here. We have HR. We have DEI here. Uh, we, we, we have just so many different departments. Uh, we have Council on Aging here, uh, and that speaks volumes, because I keep saying this, we're, we're better together, we're in this together, and, um, you know, they didn't have to come over here today, well, the veterans have to, because your office is right over there, but at the end of the day, uh, and Marty's here from Treasury Collector, uh, people understand that Brockton's a special place, and to be able to get this federal money, once in a lifetime generational money, we have to make sure we spend it in a manner that's gonna make significant impacts for years to come, right? I mean, we could have just spent it on something willy-nilly, right, that maybe other mayors are doing across the nation. But here in Brockton, we're controlling our own destiny because we have a vision, but more importantly, we have a team. It's a team effort. It starts with our friends in Washington at Capitol Hill, and then it trickles down to our wonderful, wonderful delegation. We have the best delegation of Beacon Hill. There's, there's no doubt about that, right? We have Jerry, we have Michelle, we have Rita, and we have Mike. And there's no doubt about that. And we had Claire, we had Tommy Kennedy. I mean, we have people that care about Brockton. Anna Buckley, you know, we just, we, we're a special place. But we're better because of the veterans, the people here. And so when you're talking about the six million bucks, it starts with when I became mayor and I said, let's expand the parking lot out there because that house over there has encroached. I put my little lawyer hat on and I said, all that land is being encroached, that's city land. So we cut it down and we expanded our parking lot. We're gonna to continue to expand it and we're gonna make it better. But then on this side, Kelly has a vision of a picnic area and I have a vision of, of, of a family area with bocce and, and some other things. So we're gonna be expanding that side. And we already told the schools, like the fence over there has to be cleaned up. It looks, it looks junky over there. So when we come here, when Dan says in the fall, and it will be the fall, it's not just gonna be the inside, that's going to be like, oh my God, this is awesome. It's going to be outside. We're going to be having uh, a, a statue area, memorial area for all the veterans, for all the different conflicts, kind of like what they do in Easton on Sullivan Avenue near the, uh, the Children's Museum. So just, just be patient. The detours and the traffic are going to be a pain for a while, but it's going to be worth it. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. So again, I thank you for being here today. I thank all the men and women that wear the uniforms and those that have God bless the city of Brockton. God bless the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But more importantly, God bless our United States of America. Thank you very much, everybody.